All right, we rolling, buddy. Hi. What's up, podcast episode number 73? 73. That's Dennis Rodman, old number with the Lakers. Damn. Wait, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, when Rodman played, with, I think when he played with the Lakers, he wore 73, I think. Hold on. What that, year was that? 1999. That Was that on his way out? Yeah, definitely. That was Okay, yeah, that was I mean, you're the basketball expert guy. Yeah, that was, uh, yep. That was, I don't remember him playing for the Lakers. Yes, he did. He played for the Lakers for like one season. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah! Like, ha- not even a whole season, like half a season. What you know? What we gotta have a podcast episode where we dedicate most of the time to Dennis Rodman because he's a fashion icon, fashion motherfucking icon. He doesn't get the respect he fucking deserves mm-hmm. as being like the first like like hard drag queen dude. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Yo, my man, remember that Harley Davidson? What was I, it? Yeah, I think it was Harley Davidson. Bro. It was Harley, and he, my man was naked with the fucking with the, yo, yeah. the leopard print hair or some mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The worm baby, and he'd fuck you up. Yeah, now he's uh, now he's a little, you know. A little now he's little, Korean. Yeah, he's Korean. <laughs> yo, my man, I'm Korea. Yeah, he's, he's out <laughs> we out Kim Jong Un doing his thing, yo. Um, but yeah, episode seventy three. I am one of your hosts, as you guys probably know, Chris Cheney. Across from me is my motherfucking guy, Lawrence Deloach. What's up? We back, y'all. We back. Chris is on fucking away on vacation. Lawrence is away on vacation. And what happens when we come back from vacation? We get this shit cooking, y'all. We back. Thank you for listening. Uh, and and Chris. Where you want to start, man? I don't know. I kind of want to start with Yeezy Day. Yeezy, Yeezy, the new Yeezy, fake just holiday. Over jump man. Yeah. Yeezy, Yeezy, just jump over jump man. Yeah. He got he dropped, he dropped a whole bunch of uh, Yeezy. Yo, this shit was banana. I had no idea what was going on. Yeah. I get the email saying a bunch of shit's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, what they had a countdown from like twenty four yeah. hours. Countdown, yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'll check this shit out when it goes down. Mm-hmm. And then I go on the website and it's like, all right, you want some moves? And I was like, yo, I don't want no moves. What the fuck is this? Yeah. I it because I didn't know this because I didn't read anything. Mm. They were doing shoes like every hour. Yeah, so it was like it was like two pairs here. Like the first drops, it was like an hour and a half. You had to cop. You yeah, know. and um, you know, people were like, "Oh, this is bullshit!" Like, what are they gonna give me the Pebras? And you know, then <laughs> and then they started, you know, they started doing other things. From what I heard, a lot of people couldn't even. They had the uh, a lot of people couldn't get shit because the bots were out there eating. Yeah, the, the good bots ones. was. They had the, uh, I believe they had the, ch- not the chocolate, but they had the gray 750s. Mm-hmm. They had uh, the original uh, 350 V2s, the Belugas. Yep. Uh, they had the blue tents. There was a lot of. There was a lot. Um, and Twitter was going bananas. Really? I love Twitter when stuff like this happens. Like w- Why? Just because. Because it, it's not real outrage. Like, mm-hmm. when something with the country happens, you know what I mean, people are mad on Twitter, that's not a fun Twitter to be on. Mm-hmm. But when people are taking L's, like, L Twitter is funny, not, like, destructive Twitter. You Got know what you. I mean? I feel you. So then I saw a bunch of people were photoshopping shit of, like, the Red Octobers being on there. and Hilarious. like Yo, it was so funny. And then, oh, man. But, yeah, like, once I figured out what was actually happening, I, I was trying to monitor, and it, no one could get any of the good shit, dude. Yeah, the good shit, I mean, it, come on, man. It, it, that's going to fly. The, I mean, the bots are going to eat that, people with the good programs. Um, but I just feel like, man, I feel like Adidas is trying whatever, man, to stay. They have a holiday now, though. Yeah, you I think it. this is officially. I think they're gonna spin this to be like their version of Air Max Day. I think so, man. I don't know what, why, why did they pick this day? Who knows? But I feel like uh, people definitely. I mean, Kanye was not lying. We said <laughs> this shit. Everyone, if you want a pair of his sneakers, you can get one. His prophecy came true. And I he think, was, yeah. yeah, he he didn't lie, man. He definitely he ain't lie. And uh, you know, I I told I, I said this a few times on this podcast. I'm not the biggest fan of the uh, the Yeezy line, but um, I actually I do want a pair of 700s, man. Yeah. One day, yeah. I don't know what what color. I like the OG Ray, Wave Runner. The Wave Runner is the best one. It's the best one. Yeah. And I heard they're supposed to be dropping again too. Yeah. And uh, like mid August, man, those are supposed to be coming out. So I just I think that's the best color by far, and everything else is everything else is nice, but those. You don't hold the candle, man. Yeah, because yo, literally, like the first thing I saw was the Moes, and I was like, "What the, f- what the fuck want? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what kind of? Nah, get the fuck out of here!" And then you know, on part reinspection, the other shit coming out. I tried on a couple. You did? I tried. I got nothing. I didn't even. Yo, bro, I saw it and I was like, "Nah, I'm good." I didn't even want to. I didn't even want to go for the resale. I was just like. Cause I don't think it, most there's no, them, resale, there's no anymore. resale on them anymore. Dude, it's over for Yeezy. It, you know, I, well, 
the black one, the black uh, static joints, the black. Uh, yeah, yeah, yep. Those they were doing it. people. Some people were purchased because they were all black easy. Um, but for the most part, yeah, it's like if you want the easy, you can get the easy. Yeah, it's not hard anymore. It's not. It's not a fucking. You're not jumping through hoops. I'm sure there's some people out here listening to podcasts like, "Shut the fuck up, Lawrence." I still haven't gotten a pair of Yeezys, but I mean, for the most part, you should be able to. Well, th- I mean, if they want a specific one, and then they just keep missing out. But if you want a pair of Yeezys in general, yeah, you can get one you can get, today. You can get a pair, man. You could be in Kansas. <laughs> oh, definitely, bro. You could be at your grandma's house. Definitely. And just be like, today is the day I'm going to get a pair of Yeezys. You could leave the house and you can get one. Yeah, You man. don't got to be in a major city anymore. Like You can get a pair of Yeezys. No, that's the that's the untrue story, man. We're not even lying about that. And it doesn't even, you know, now, like you said, people, when, when stuff like that happens, people do one of two things. They either... Uh, because they they wanted to sell them and they didn't sell them and now they're pissed because now they're dealing with they're not making a quote unquote profit or some right. people are like whoa I sold them shits at the right time mm-hmm. you know what I mean or I wore them at the right time and and uh and 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 now you gotta realize man people were like I'm gonna take you know I can't even sell these on StockX <laughs> uh huh and, and I mean StockX itself has a whole thing going on right now they got a, they got mother yeah I can't wait for a year from now when People say, "Hey, if you uh, if you sold stuff on StockX three years ago, you are entitled to a hundred and fifty dollars settlement." <laughs> oh yeah, it's like the asbestos commercials. Yeah, yeah or like <laughs> or like ten years of free credit credit monitoring and shit like that. It's uh, that's like the the Equifax or whatever. Yeah, the like, Equifax. Shit, the Equifax. Yeah. Shit. yeah Wait, man. did you get anything out of that? I didn't even I didn't try, but I think you can. I can get one hundred twenty five dollars. Yeah, it's like one hundred fifty, one hundred twenty five. A bunch of my friends got it. Uh, I went and I've always had a lady do my taxes. I got a tax lady. Okay. So I, 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 nothing for me. I think it's like when you use the automated shit or whatever. Like, oh, really? I think that's a parent company. I'm talking out of my ass. I don't really know, but okay. But uh, yeah, I was, I didn't qualify. Yeah, man, it was uh, that uh, StockX man. <laughs> they, uh, you know, at first they were trying to play it cool, man. Like nothing. It was just, hey, did you want to reset your password? Yo, we just got, we got to update some shit, dog. So just like, yo, uh, update your password, make it not the same. <laughs> Yo, like change that shit, cause like you know the update is gonna be crazy, and uh, the bugs aren't gonna be there anymore. Nah, they hit you. They hit you yesterday. I got an email from them saying, "Hey, Lawrence, this is a courtesy email to confirm that you recently <laughs> changed your account information with stock. Uh, if you do, if you recognize this change, great. Uh, if not, and then a couple hours later they say, "Hey, StockX cares deeply about the privacy of our customers. In the recent days, our company has discovered a data security issue uh-huh. that we want to." provide you with the update and it's just like we were alerted to suspicious activity potentially involving customer debt what the fuck y'all tried to play it off like nothing was wrong a couple days ago now y'all got fucking now y'all got tore up and <laughs> yeah because thursday they was hitting us with we completed system updates so act to access your account reset really now fucking saturday is oh we got we got hacked yeah we know you got <laughs> hacked and I just want my hundred and twenty five dollars. I'm from entitled to. Yeah, I'm entitled yo, to this money. Now nah, they're evaluated at a billion, yo. You can get more than that. You probably, I yeah, I know. I'm probably get a couple hundred. Yeah, There's I a know. call center in India with all your information. Now they're gonna call you, going, "Do you want to use these?" Or <laughs> I, I, I st- you know, it's funny because I stay getting these. Uh, I don't know about you, but I stay getting these phone calls from uh, like these Chinese scammers, and they just like they start speaking in in, in can- Canto or Mando. Like you get <laughs> yeah. like, and it's just always I'm like, oh man, StockX fucking gave my information out. Someone gave my information because i'm getting a lot of scam calls but yeah dude it's um you know (laughs) i just i just love the idea of like because there were actual listings for the information you could buy them like 300 dollars a pop i don't know how much of the information you got because it was definitely sectional but like people are buying that shit i just love the idea of going like all right so we're gonna call lawrence deloach seems like based off his purchase history let's mention that we have the um (laughs) the fragment threes jesus christ bro (laughs) that is uh it's not a good look man i'm i mean Places, bro, places get hacked all the time, but I feel like this is uh, not a good look for StockX. Man. No, StockX has been very rocky. I mean, so they, they're they backed by the e- eBay now. They have the eBay guy in there. Um, they're evaluated at a billy, so they're doing well on paper, but this is just, I mean. <laughs> yeah, it's not a good look, man. No, man. Like, they didn't cover their ass well at all. Um, uh, you know what I think it is? Here's the thing. I think it's the fact that not only did they get hacked, but then they lied and tried to cover it up. Yeah, that's not and good. And then they got, you know, and then people were like, no, 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 fuck out of here. 
um, you know, and um, and that's the that's the big issue. I feel like. I do like the idea though of people having your purchase history and just calling you and be like, "Yo, I got uh some fucking Red Octobers if you want." <laughs> you know it's what I mean? It's crazy, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, there's a, a, already a bunch of class action lawsuit uh, like Instagram accounts popping up trying to like hit people. Be like, "Hey, did you get affected by this?" Really? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I got affected by. I mean, you have a stock X, uh You you have a stock X? I've never done any business with them. Okay, I've done so that. I don't know. How, I don't think I even put like my, my card info on there or anything. See, I see, I have. I know. So it's like you know. Hold on, let me try to pull up one of the things that I saw. Um, but yeah, dude, like that shit. That's real fucking bad. I mean, yeah, bro. I mean, six point eight million records. That's so, so much information. I know, bro. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, you haven't know. done a lot of business with them, but you've done enough, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm petty reseller, five like under five grand. <laughs> I mean, all right, so yeah, that's not that's not the worst, but no, I mean, you know, you got people selling quarter million quarter million dollars worth of shit on StockX, but no, I mean, yeah, it's still, I mean, bro, regardless of what, it's still not a good. Look. Yeah, so you can go to um at StockX lawsuit, that's an actual Instagram account, mm-hmm. <laughs> and. Uh, the message that he, they've been sending people is, uh, we started an online petition to sue StockX, and we would really like it if you could come and share your story. We thank you in advance. Uh, and then the, they sign it with team hashtag fuck StockX. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Their logo is fuck, and then the, the X. <laughs> uh, shit is great. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know. There's so many fucking scams now. I feel like... Because streetwear has become such a marketable and interesting, uh, like, uh, uh-huh. area of, I don't want to say discussion or, I don't know, it's just like, everyone's interested in the clothing and, and being, like, the cool hip guy now, it's like fucking, like, the network app, for another example, dude, like, so, I don't know if you saw, but there was, like, some M&M 4s I've never seen before. Okay. One of the elusive ones, they were like, alright, we're raffling these off for a hundred bucks. So I'm like, mm. okay, that's enough for me to get interested. They're of like, course, of yeah, course. Yeah, so course. they're claiming the resale is like forty five grand. we are going to raffle them off for $100. bucks. i am like, all right, there's something wrong here, but there's enough appeal for me to go look into it. Mm-hmm. Download the app. It's like, all right, give us your credit card information. So if we pull your raffle. Yeah, so I was you like. Uh, chart, yeah. yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, okay, I, I know the scam on this. Like, mm-hmm. so whatever. You can have my card info. It's not like uh, you're going to be the only people that have it. Um, and I'm looking at the other shit, dude. They're raffling off like. Crazy shit for only a hundred dollars. I don't know what they're getting out of it, but this is crazy scam. Yeah, they get, they're be. getting your contact information. They're getting that like they could sell that because yeah, I've uh, I've seen the network app and I've seen what you know Supreme Dunks and oh. yeah, yo. So they got um, Tuesday, August sixth. So this Tuesday, you can ra- you can put your name in for a uh, Supreme two thousand two Dunk Low, and then the next day is the SB Supreme High. Then you got some SpongeBob shit or whatever, and then you got the Unions. You got some Off Whites. Whites. The fragment ones, um, then some weird shit. I don't know. And then look, you can get my <laughs> coming full circle back with to a Rodman mm-hmm. uh, collectible. But there's some crazy shit. Some Babesters. Like mm-hmm. what? All this shit is fire. But it's like, yeah, you guys are definitely scamming the shit out of me for this. How do you have all this stuff for only a hundred bucks? Well, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's what the you know the question is. How does this shit? You know, if I see it. Jeff Staple on the streets, I think this is his app. If I see Jeff Staple, well, remember uh, they did the Pigeon Stew yeah. Network, and it fucking was some of the worst. It was a uh, terrible. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was, uh, I was put, had the app on my phone. I'm like, I'm not even gonna put my phone number in there. <laughs> you put in the area code. You're like, nah, I'm nah, I'm good, shit. man. Fuck that, <laughs> man. It's uh, this is this is where we're at now. But like you said, it brings up a big point. We have so many people that are, that want to be that want to be fly, want the most exclusive shit, and then when you have these type of apps, then you, you get results like this where people are like, yeah. oh, I'll fucking, you know, I'll put my information, and then boom, what happens? people hack it because why it's you know it's not super secure so uh yeah you gotta you gotta you know tread lightly on those type of things because you know what's the odds of you getting eminem force bad very very slim it's bad yeah man so uh slim is an understatement slim man speaking (laughs) of slim slim shady is a rapper and we got another rapper that's fucking free thanks to el president say (laughs) trump ASAP Rocky's free, man. ASAP is free. Well, he's, uh, he's home. He's still got to fucking. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he could just not go back. <laughs> it's like he can just not go back. It's fine. Yeah, he, yeah, he could be a wanted man in Sweden forever. Although I love how Trump was like, I got him out. 
I mean, yo, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I, I, <laughs> Dude, I'm, he had, but the, the what is he? The prime minister? The prime minister was like, nah, bro. I let him out. It had nothing to do with you. <laughs> yo, man, I ain't gonna lie to you, man. The Trump hit you with the great one of the top five greatest tweets I've seen from the president. ASAP Rocky was released from prison and on his way home to the United States from Sweden. And here's where it gets great. It was a rocky week. Get home ASAP. ASAP. That's <laughs> fucking great. That's it's the best. It's it listen, man. <laughs> it's gotta have a ghostwriter. I don't think that motherfucker thought I don't that know. No, I'm gonna give Trump that one. You gonna give him? You gonna I give him that? He got that one. Yeah. He fucking wrote that one, man. Dude's gonna have to restart yeah. rethinking 2020, bro. Yo, he be... used the money sign in the correct places. Yo, that's what makes it hilarious, man. Yo, <laughs> we got ASAP free. We got Trump taking fucking pride in doing it, getting him out, and that's where we at right now. Yo, I can't wait till Schmurder's out. Yo, Trump, get Schmurder out, man. How yeah. about you do that, man? Yeah, what the f- Yo, Trump, get, sh- get Schmurder out. Get Bobby Schmurder out. Who else is in? Get Free 6 9 fuck don't, it. Nah, don't Free 6 9 no, right now. No, Free 6 9 fuck it. Fuck, don't Free 6 9 Um, Get Shine out. Get, sh- get Shine? <laughs> is Shine still if you get, nah, you get Shine? If you get that little nigga Takashi out, yo, I ain't even gonna lie to you, man. He, this, he, the music game, well, nah, because he gonna have to change his whole face and everything because because of the whole, you know, snitching. Nah, I don't know, man. Uh, my inside information, uh, I think, is he's going in protective. Yeah, he's definitely going in protective. Because I used to be in Rock Nation building, you know, low Whoa, key. allegedly. No, I, I was. Oh, okay, cool. I'm, I mean, I just want, I don't want to give any personal info out of the people I knew that in the building, but uh, right. yeah, they were saying that. Um, this was a while ago. I got told this too. They were like, "Yeah, they're gonna spend like mad money to fix his face up, and then he's yeah, gonna go course. to witness protection." But uh, also, that's all. You know, who knows? That's hearsay. That's just info I was told. But Fifi got that hot he got that body with the shoddy, got the oddy. Fifi. Wait, where is Shine? By the way, I don't know, man. Let's look at where Shine's at. Shine, is he still in jail? Yo, Trump, get Shine out. He can't be in jail still. Get my get my nigga Cherms out. You can get all them dudes out. Then, you know what I mean? I got to rethink 2020. Unless you can get all them out. Nah, I'm, I ain't with the shits, Brody. Um, Well, I'm not going to really read into this, but... uh, All you got to do is just search, <laughs> is Shine in jail? Ish, all right, hold on. Cover me while I do this. All right. Is Shine in jail? Is he in jail? Is... Motherfucking shine in jail. No, nah, he, he should be out now. He's out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. Shine's out. Man. Yo, Trump, put Shine back in jail so we can get another album. Whoa, <laughs> I, I <don't laughs> no, I'm, Whoa. I'm fucking around. Yo, I'm chill. I'm calm down. Whoa, man. Damn, yeah, he got man. ten years. Uh, June first, two thousand one. Yeah, so he should he should be out now, man. He should. Yeah, he definitely right. should. Man. Shout out to Shine. Shout out to Puff. Shout out to Revolt. <laughs> Just start all the affiliations. I know, right? <laughs> so we got, um, you know, last week we were both on vacation, man. Some uh, interesting drop happened uh, last Sunday on the. Uh, oh, your man. My man Virgil on the uh, the uh, sneakers uh, stash type thing, or you know, Chicago only. This is Chicago only release. I don't get why people are upset about this, right? When the uh, when the moment was released, it was a New York. It was a New York release, right? MoMA Air Force Ones. They didn't even do this many fucking releases. Nike didn't even touch it. Yeah. And and this is a Chicago exclusive. Like I, you know, as much as I I like them and I think they're dope. And I think the colorway it represents Chicago with the old flag. This is a Chicago release. And what people on this now here's the thing: when they came out last week, uh, people were able to spoof their location. So if you have a spoofing app or you have on your or spoofing program on your computer where you can spoof your location, it's a good is chance. spoof a technical term? Yes, yeah, yeah, it's like spoofing. You don't know what spoofing? No, nah, explain spoofing to me. I don't know about the spoof. Spoof your location, bro. You don't. Know Do that. I spoof? Do you nah, spoof? I don't spoof. You don't spoof? I don't spoof because I'm not that technically uh, adept. But uh, oh, sub podcast uh, is against spoofing. That's our official stance. No, yeah. I, oh, it's like a re, it's a relocator. Is that what you're saying? So yeah, like you can so, change your location on your phone or some shit. Yeah. So okay. you, you know, so basically, you know, so uh, you know, you spoof your fake GPS location, and then you know, do you have a spoof email too? It's like a fake email. I'm sure. It's like your junk email, right? Your spoof email. Yeah. Should we make spoof a real thing? What? What do you mean? Let's make spoof like a term. 
Mm. <laughs> oh shit! You can get, you can get a fake GPS location. So it's spa- fake GPS location. Oh, there's an app, fake GPS location for iPhone. Wow, mm-hmm. that is extremely unnecessary. Why? Who would need this? What? If you if you need this, you need to get out of the relationship you're in. Okay. <laughs> if you're a guy who needs to get a fake GPS locator on your phone, or if you're a girl that needs it to. Get, avoid your guy, or if you're a guy that is doing it to get sneakers for retail, you need to reevaluate the situation. A lot of people say this app is not working, so it's not a good app, mate. But I'm sure there are some good spoofing. Well, yeah, because dudes use, I think Xcode dudes is using the fucking uh, uh, spoof. You know, I mean, and, and once again, I mean, I don't think people are using spoofing to fucking um, just buy sneakers. I mean, there's got to be other things. That people are doing, bro. So you change your GPS location, and that's it. But okay, what was the what was the benefit of spoofing? What and, and for 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 the sneakers for the sneakers because all right. So with the Nike, you know, they say, hey, if you're in Chicago, you know, basically in order for you to purchase these or have a shot to, you have to uh, be in Chicago. So if yeah. you're in Seattle. You're not in Chicago, but oh, if you spoofed your location. I see what you're saying. Okay. Then boom. Now. So then you can put your phone in Chicago to get. I got you. Okay. There you go. I didn't so, realize that's how. I thought. Okay. I thought this was going to be like a Nigel Sylvester thing and like where they, they were like hiding them or whatever. And then you would. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. But that, but makes, even, that but makes, even, makes way more sense. Even with that too, you can, you know, you can still spoof your location. Yeah. Some people, you know, but the only thing a lot of times with, with this one was sometimes. Like when they do the, the the sneaker stash, you have to be in the city to pick up the sneakers from right, the store. Yeah, yeah. This was like if you spoof your location, then Nike would send them to your house. Wow. Yeah. With the out of state shipping address. Yeah, because okay, see Nike's. I don't. You know, unfortunately, Nike's not going to be like, well, you know, you live in Atlanta. You know, because imagine you're imagine you're visiting Chicago. Right. Yeah. There is that. There is that idea. Yep. You're visiting Chicago, and you just you know you're like, hey, I'm, I want to see my girlfriend, or I want to see my my sister, and you know my brother, and and you're in Chicago, and you're like, oh shit, here's an opportunity to, to get these sneakers, these these MCAs that I want. Mm-hmm. Why? How? How can they be like, nah, you spoofed, you know, or nah, you, you're not a <laughs> Chicago resident. <laughs> nah, dog, you spoofed. You spoofed. You fucking spoofing, baby. <laughs> You fucking spoofing out here. We don't fuck with spoofers. <laughs> we don't fuck with you spoofers. <laughs> we don't like you. Go back to your fucking city. Yeah, he was city. spoofing ass motherfucker. Yo, I go love spoof. To, go back to your city, baby. <laughs> uh, spoof. <laughs> spoof is great. Yeah, man. That's the name of this episode is spoof. You be spoofing? Yeah, yo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine being on McDougal. If anyone's been on McDougal, because you know Lawrence and I being comedians, we spend a lot of time on there. There's a bunch of uh, dealers on the block. They always walk by, going like, "Yo, Coke, Molly, weed, or whatever." Or they're like, "Yo, you want a party?" <laughs> I just imagine these guys. Like, hey, yeah, you trying to spoof? <laughs> trying to spoof. You, you looking for those off whites? I can help you spoof, dog. <laughs> I can help you spoof. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I think a lot of times for you to, especially on your phone, for you to really be able to spoof your location, you gotta have a jailbroken phone. I think. Yeah, you do. You know what? Because um, when you after I realized what exactly was going on, mm-hmm. uh, I looked into spoofing for Pokemon Go because it was. Only- <laughs> well, I think a lot of people. That's why a lot of people like yeah. spoofing for for their video games. Yeah, because you can only get certain Pokemon in certain areas of the world. Yep. So people were spoofing to get like Mr. Mime or Jinx or some shit. That's, yeah, that's what I'm. So that's why that's a big thing that people do too. So yeah, or Taurus. I forget the exact ones, but mm-hmm. whatever. I'm a I'm a I'm back on my nerd shit. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, you know what? My nerd raider, uh, my nerd uh, meter went off. Pause. Why? Uh, Because I I don't know if you saw them, but there's going to be a Shark Week Discovery Vans. So imagine the Vans. Hold on. Let me pull them up for you. Pull pull them up. Vans Shark Week. Because this shit is sick. My my nerd uh, tingle went off. My spidey nerd sense. Pull them up. Vans Shark. Sorry, guys. Hold on. I got to. Vans Shark Week. Yo, look at them shits, yo. So for the uh, for the listeners at home, it's uh, it, like it's like a normal Vans high skate high, but there's a break in the V or like the stripe of the Vans and a shark is like biting through it. Oh, that's dope, shit. man! Yeah, that's why I, was, I was saw this shit. I was like, yo, I don't like sharks enough to buy this, but the story is flames. And it came out already. 
Um, yeah, yeah. They're out. You should be able to buy them. Yeah, now. you should be able to buy. You can get them at Urban Outfitters and shit. I guess that's the website I'm on right now. They're, I mean, they're cool. If you like sharks and you like vans, you know, if you're a hipster Shark Week dude, then yeah, grab them. Yeah, they're seventy five bucks. That's not bad. No. Get them on Tilly's. What do you think about Tilly's? What's your favorite store? Like your favorite outlet store. Or not outlet. What would you call this? Like uh, just your favorite retail? Like, you know, Jimmy Jazz, Tilly's. Is there any? Oh, no. Nah, I really don't shop in any of I mean, I would say like J. Crew, but I don't know if that, if you can count. Classify that. Yeah, you're as a like, little, you're a little higher end as far as your store choice. Yeah, I like J. Crew. I mean, if you want to say, but I mean, Tilly's, Jimmy Jazz, nah. I mean, you know, I would say uh, if you want to, I don't know, Nordstrom. I don't go. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you go to the, you go to the bougie shit kind of. That's who I am. That's you're a little bougie shopper, Lauren. Because I'll go to, I'll go to Jimmy Jazz. Really, I haven't gone to Jimmy Jazz, man. In private. Well, because like, it's the the one over by Becky's that's like on the way. So like, if something comes out and I want to see if it's still around, just I go. Oh, well, I'll I mean, go see what's up about with Jimmy shoes Jazz. or clothing. Both. Uh, clothing? No, I don't. I mean, I don't shop at Jimmy Jazz anymore. No, no disrespect to Jimmy Jazz, but I, I mean, Jimmy Jazz got me through plenty of years in college and shit, and even as a young adult. But. Uh, you know, for sneakers, uh, I'll definitely go to Jimmy Jazz if they have something I want. If they have something I want, I'll go to Jimmy Jazz. Well, all right, cool. That's what's up. There yeah. you go. Um, but what? So, I mean, we were gone for a while. But did anything cool happen while I, while we were separated? Did you do anything legit? I mean, I went to Rochester, New York, for a friend's uh, baby shower. Uh, I ate a lot of like different cuisines in Rochester. <laughs> basically okay. involved everything being fried and shit. And oh, nice! Uh, there you go. You had a fat weekend. I had a fat weekend, and uh, that is pretty much it. How about yourself? So I was in Boston, and I met up with a uh, friend of the show, Frank the Butcher, and we got a bonus episode. So go to the Sub Podcast Patreon and listen to that. Oh, that's dope! It's yep. Fire! Fire! Fucking um, listen to that. I went to the new Reebok headquarters. I haven't been there since they went to the... So they're on the seaport now. Okay. So you, they used to be in Canton, Massachusetts, yep. which is south of Boston. Okay. Campus was fucking huge, dude. Uh, when I first started in there, there was Rockport, Adidas, uh, fucking uh, Mitchell and Ness was even in there, Reebok. They were really? all Yeah, they were all in there. Um, so they're gone from there, and now they're in the uh, dry seaport or dry port. I forget exactly what they call it. But okay. Basically, in this brand new building by the water, and uh, I remember on my way there, I was thinking like, why would they build on the port? Because mm-hmm. global warming is sort of like an accepted idea now. Okay, building on waterfront property is kind of insane because that's the first that's going to go. go. Yeah, yeah. So I get there, and the lobby is actually on the fourth floor. <laughs> oh, so like shit. they like thought of this. They were yeah. like, "Yo, let's just let the first three go." Because the first three, the first floor, right when you get there, and it, I guess the store is public now. So if you're if you live in Boston, if you want to go check out the store, you can. Back when I was at Reebok, it was a private store. Mm-hmm. You had to be an employee or have an employee let you in. Okay. But now you can just go to this store, and then if you know an employee, you can get half off. Got you. But so you go there, it's the store, and then they have the CrossFit gym because they're big CrossFit people or whatever. And then you have to, I don't, the first and Frank told me what the the second third floor were. In the bonus episode. But the fourth floor, yeah, that's just like the regular lobby. Oh, that's kind of dope, though, bro. Because like you said, like if it gets pretty bad, yeah. if it fucking, <laughs> then, you know, then nothing, you know, fourth floor is pretty much. We're just going to be having boats to get to work. You have to, that's you, dope, bro. There's going to be like city bikes, but boats to get to your office job oh, when you work dope, on the bro. water. I like that. Um, But that's... this shit was funny. And then, yeah, you know, I was at the beach, regular shit. Okay. Yeah, that was cool. Did you uh did you hit, hit any other stores? Nah, I I got these uh Reebok workouts that I'm wearing right now, all white with the gum sole, just because they were forty bucks clean. You know what I mean? These are like when my I, at the time like my thought was beach beaters. I was like, okay. oh, I'll just buy a pair of shoes to wear while I'm home and around. And actually, you know what, dude? I forgot how much I like these. Excuse me. These are a solid fucking shoe. They are. Yeah, I mean, everyone kind of hates on me for being a Bach boy. But, I mean, <clears throat> you are who you are. Damn, why you got to yawn when you say that? Because you Now are, I feel disrespect. Like you, you are who you are, The Chris. second I talk, talk about Reeboks, you're like, dude, I've had enough. I've had <laughs> enough. You <laughs> are who you are, bro. Now, these are solid, though, man. I used to skate in these. These were like. They definitely have skate. I mean, skate. What's the name of the, the singer again? Uh, the wor- uh, Reebok Workout. Reebok Workout. No, but Stephen Williams, when he was uh, with his Dirty Ghetto Kids brand, they did uh, skate versions of these. I okay. remember skating in high school. Was it high school? Maybe it was college. 
It was like my tail end of my skate career. Okay. Uh, I was wearing Reebok workouts, and there were those. Was it Stevie? Stevie Williams. No, let me look this up. Dirty Ghetto Kids. Dirty Ghetto Kids. I remember uh, when I first heard of DGK, I didn't know what it stood for. And then when someone told me, I was like, that was an ill advised name to name your fucking skate company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Stevie Williams. Yeah, I was right. But yeah, Stevie. Dirt, Dirty Ghetto Kids, Reebok. Yeah, dude, they had like skate pumps and shit. This shit was dope. Hmm. But yeah, man. It was a good time. Make sure you go to patreon.com slash uh, subpodcast NYC. Check out the episode. We're going to be putting more exclusive shit on there. More exclusive interviews yeah. with people. More bonus shit. You know, we got stuff coming. I've been working on some, uh, some f- uh, what do you call them? Like flyer posters, some prints to hang up. Me and Elle are going to brainstorm some shit. It's going to be dope. It's going to be fucking fuego. Mm-hmm. But yeah, man, that was that. I had a good time. I had a good time, man. Um, I mean, you you talked about this a little earlier, but uh, you saw the Fragment um, 3 sample. Fragment Jordan 3 sample, man. Yeah. Uh, I, they got to do another Fragment, man. They do. I mean, we, I mean Fragment Jordan. Yeah. Because I mean, there's been plenty of Fragment shoes. Mm-hmm. Throughout the uh, throughout the course of uh, history, uh, you know we have fragment uh, Roshi's and you know fragment. Yeah, there's plenty of frags uh, out there. Um, I mean, why do you think they didn't come out with them? Do you know the story? I don't know the story. I have no information. I think uh, at first, you know, where the elephant print is on the uh, on the side, it's leather embossed with the fragment logo. Uh, but I, I think these, I don't know why they never dropped them, man. Fragment ones, you know, are, are still people's grails to this day. Yeah, coveted. Coveted, man. These are clean. I wish that the leather had the elephant print, though, and they just worked around the logo. I that know. would be fuego. Like they did with, because the, the Tinker threes, um, the white pair, the, the cement is all black. Uh huh. They could have worked around it. That would have been sick. But damn, yeah, these are these are nice, dude. Yeah, they are nice, man. They are super nice, man. Um, As a consolation prize, you can get the fragment Starbucks coffee cup. Ooh, <laughs> you gotta go. You gotta go to Japan for them. Yeah, I think you have to go to Japan. Oh <laughs> shit! But maybe you could spoof your location. You could spoof your location <laughs> on Starbucks. <laughs> then- I don't wait. <laughs> fragment Starbucks. Yo, some of the accessories that people make now. This is wild. Wait, let me get the image for this shit. I think there's like a clear one. Oh fuck. There's like mad fragment cups now. Oh dog, I saw the <laughs> Wait, yo, talk about basketball for a second while I fo- while I pull up the official image. Fuck that. We talking about football now. It's football season. Fantasy time, guys. I hope everyone is starting to do their research on fantasy football because I sure the fuck am and I got to make my motherfucking money. <laughs> Let's get that money. Let's get that money. <laughs> Stop laughing like that, man. Stop fucking let me yeah, man. <laughs> Do your thing, bro. I'm I'm I support you. Nah, I'm, I don't think you support me, but bro. But you talk you're the one yawning in my face. Oh yeah, here I found it. Uh <laughs> talk about rebuttal. I ain't yawning in front of no one's face, man. You literally podcast. just yawned. We have audio evidence. Sup podcast episode number seventy three. Word, Chris. Lee. Yeah, so uh <laughs> marking the duo's first joint effort since last year, Fragment Design and Starbucks Japan reunite for a limited release. This time the pair's <laughs> output center is around Starbucks instant coffee product via. Uh dude, like <laughs> these some of these meetings gotta be insane. Yeah, of course. I mean, but you gotta realize here's the thing though, it's in in Japan. Yeah, he's a fucking icon of oh, legend. Dude, yeah. He, so in, in, in Mirakami, in, fucking yeah. uh Migo. Yeah, all these dudes, man. Yo, HTM. Type in uh, Nike HTM. I forgot. It's uh, Tinker, uh, Mark, and Hiroshi. That's who HTM is. I Nike mean, bro, HTM. He, uh, yeah, Hiroshi, Tinker, and Mark. I believe. HTM on the record. Yeah, yeah. It's a collab. It's Mark Parker, Tinker, and Hiroshi. They they do the HTM series, but um. Yeah, Hiroshi is man. Listen, man, he is fucking. Um, Fujiwara is is frag. Yeah, you know what I mean. But uh, <laughs> they listen, bro. He's huge, man, in Japan. So, you know, 
I don't know if I knew about this as in depth as I thought I did. You didn't know H- you didn't you weren't familiar with the with the workings of HTM? No, I mean I knew they were doing stuff. I didn't know it was like HTM was the name of the shit. I thought it was I thought HTM was like, you know, one of the just like a subsector of whatever brand You know how all these brands have like the little side shit, like the small shit. Mm-hmm. Like we were talking about consortium last mm-hmm. episode, how they're ending. I thought HTM was like gonna be like an ACG or like No, a little, no, 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 no. I mean HTM. I didn't realize it was the designer's names and the thing. That's yeah, fucking tight. Yeah, bro. They have some of the some of the most exclusive like uh, uh they have like HTM Kobe's and like HTM Air Force Ones. Like they got some shit, but yeah, but uh, uh Hiroshi is like I like I said. Yeah, a no, legend. I, I mean I know all about Hiroshi. Dude. Hiroshi, a legend dude, Fujiwara is out here fucking yeah, being a legend. From what I heard, and I think I said this on this podcast, there was there was a rumor that was supposed to be Hiroshi versus Virgil. They were supposed to each do ten uh, sneakers. Oh yeah, I think we talked about the gold against yeah. each other, but that shit never. Uh... Nah, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know, man. How do we get here? Oh, yeah, we're talking about Starbucks. <laughs> See, this shit is cool. This shit is dope. The Starbucks thing, I'm like, why even bother? What is the point of this? Mm-hmm. I don't get it anymore. Like, the some people, are, we're just reaching. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, but if you, if you guys want to spoof, get your Starbucks cup. I don't even know. Like, you, yo, you want to pay fucking 12 U.S. dollars for uh, some fragment via packets? Go for it, dog. Go for that shit. <clears throat> man, let's just give us the three. Yeah, I want that three, <laughs> man. Keep the coffee. Give us the three. That's how I'm feeling, bro. I'm like, I need I need the three to go with the one because three plus one is four, and four, I don't have anything else to say about that, but uh, <laughs> no, I just want them shits. I like those, man. I, you know, I wonder who's going to be the – I wonder if there's going to be an NBA player that's going to rock those in the upcoming <clears throat> season. It's I mean, how many pair? All right, so here, here's a question. It's stuff like this, it's like, how many pairs did they actually make? Of course. And is P.J. Tucker willing to spend a lot of money to fucking get a pair, or is Kyle Kuz going to rock them? Because why? Because GOAT is, ha- I think they're the ones with the uh, with the sneaker. Or- yeah, GOAT has the sample. Now, I can't, they're... I can't. They blurred out the tongue, so you can't see any of the information. Those smart motherfuckers. Look at that. Right, I tried. No, to, it's not wrong. With, I mean, no, but that usually you could use that stuff on the tongue to look up more information about it. Uh, but they these motherfuckers blurred out the images, which is smart though, because that that stops the bootleggers from trying to. Yo, I was about to be like, yo, I'm about to get on my investigative shit, but nah, man, they just fucking blurred that shit out. Those. Ooh, I like them frag threes. I think they. I think we're gonna see a pair of frag threes three soon. Frag threes. Frag threes. <laughs> Free thags. Three frags. <laughs> it's fucking Mike Tyson would be proud of us. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Um, you know, speaking of, let's just got because we could talk about the uh, the shoes that sold for half a mil. So, when we took the the week off, had we had the two parter. Um, it was like even like maybe before we recorded the podcast, but St- Stadium Goods uh, teamed up with uh, So the Buys, and I don't even know if that's how you pronounce that, but the Ultimate Sneaker Collection in quotes was auctioned off at Stadium Goods, and there was a shoe that sold for like half a mil. Half a mil. The, it's said to be the most expensive sneaker ever sold, um, and it's like an original Nike from like you know 1942 or whatever the fuck. <laughs> Uh, she's 72, the moon shoe. Yeah, believed to be the only unworn pair in existence, but it looks like it was pulled out of a homeless man's ass. I mean, the the, the soles look great, but the uppers just look, yeah, they look weather. Actually, no, the soles for a shoe that old, that's, yeah. It sold uh, for the exact total was 400, uh, wait, $437,500. Uh, and, sh- yeah. Apparently, there was a bunch of other s- sneakers in there. Go back up. Go down. Go down. Hold Where? Up. Hold so up. Miles Nadal purchased all but one of the shoes for a total of eight hundred and fifty k. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some people in their fucking money. Dude, if you got it and you love sneakers, this is what this is about, man. Would I spend that type of money on sneakers? No. No. <laughs> no. So I just said no. Yeah, we yo, if I had this kind of money, I would not 
I'd start my own shoe company, probably. Probably. And I'd hire you to be uh, the creative, I don't know. Creative marketer? I don't know. I don't know. What what what, what job would you want a sneaker company? I just want to wear the shit and then uh, so people can spend more money because then whatever I wear, people be like, oh, that's <laughs> fucking fire. Oh, bro. you just want to be like head of storytelling or something weird. Head of storytelling, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah, with that type of money, man, there's so much other things you could do it. But I mean, once again, we all know what the man's worth. You know? That's true. Could be a motherfucking billionaire. I mean, <clears throat> probably. Probably is right. Um, you know, speaking of a Billy, you know, we already talked about uh, StockX, but I did want to mention this Supreme article that GQ wrote. You know, another billion dollar brand here. Ah, motherfucking Supreme NYC. Yeah, yeah. so no, this is actually a legitimate, nice uh, write up that G2, uh, GQ did about Supreme. Okay. Uh, it's called Inside Supreme or The Real Story of Supreme. Which I don't know how real this is, uh, you know, because some of the information I've seen in here, I'm like, I don't, I don't really know how I. Uh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, there's a couple quotes. I'm not going to talk about the article in, in length, but mm-hmm. so we had Chappie on here. Yes, I think episode 12, him and Malia came on. Yes, uh, Chappie used to work at the original location mm-hmm. uh, as a retail employee. He was mm-hmm. the manager, correct? Mm-hmm. Was it? Uh, I'm not sure what his title. I forget was. his title was, but he was in there. Mm-hmm. Um. And, you know, we kind of joked with him about how, like, all the Supreme uh, employees are kind of assholes. Mm-hmm. And he was like, nah, 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 nah. but. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, slightly. A <laughs> little bit, a little bit. Ooh. So in this article, they quote this chick, uh, Jen Brill, who's a prominent, they quote her as a prominent New York creative director. Um with close ties to the brand, and she says uh, <laughs> um, the people that work there were, in quote now, is uh, it was the cutest boys with the best styles and the shittiest attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> there was crazy energy around the store, and it didn't feel like a shop because they definitely didn't want to sell you anything. <laughs> Maybe they didn't even want you in the store. <laughs> Yo, that shit is so fucking I don't funny. see no lies being told to this day, 1994, 2019. It don't matter. The motherfuckers don't like you. Don't uh, matter. Don't matter the year, the time, the date, the place, the whatever. Even this, the, the Lafayette Street location is closed. It don't matter. They don't fucking want you in there. Yo, it's so fucking funny. And then later in the article, okay, mm-hmm. so it, it's, talks, it's, it's talking about James Jabby, the founder of Supreme, uh, specifically. Um, and now in this in this article here, I'm just going to say this kind of out of context because it's funny. It says, uh, what's clear is that he operates on his own terms and refuses to make concessions based on what anyone else does or wants. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then the following sentence is a quote from James Chabia. <laughs> it says, the reason we do things the way we do is because we respect the customer. <laughs> I am not buying it. Me neither. But anyway... Um, go to GQ, uh, dot com, read the article. Uh, you know, the other thing that's funny about this fucking article, dude, is like, all right, so they have, in the middle of the article, they have like 42 images of like what they think is like special mm-hmm. Supreme pieces. Mm-hmm. All of these pieces are none of the things that I would respect anybody for wearing. No, Supreme, nope. So they got this like racing jacket, the skull racing jacket. I don't, I forget what year that came out. They got this cardigan that Bill Cosby looked like he drugged women in. They got these pants that only, like, a fucking British uh, skinhead would wear. All these things I would never wear. There's only a couple of them. Let me see. They got, like, fur shit, the patch shit, the Obama shit, um, blazers, like, fur coats, weird pants. Like, you see any of these that you would fuck with? No. This one I would, the uh, the Generation Fuck You mm-hmm. bomber jacket with the reverse type. That's cool. I'd wear that shit. But none of these other ones I don't think I would wear. No, no. Anyway, go check it out, guys. Cool article. Um, I like the blood and semen pants. I'm a big. I, I have the hat, so I like this. Oh, the uh, like the marble. I'm yeah, on it, Mars. It's called blood and semen. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, dude. Fuck. <laughs> it's just so look, look, no, this, it has all the. It has all the. When when blood the and came, semen sweatpants. Yeah, yeah, fall winter 2017. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> did you sell your uh, rose jacket? Uh yes. You uh, did. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Did we talk about how much? Uh nothing I want to like <laughs> I'm like so happy about. Yeah, no, you didn't get it for the price you wanted. No, I didn't get it for the price I did wanted. Did you make money though? I made some money, but I ain't really, you know what I mean? No, I got you. 
It wasn't nothing crazy. Um, but now maybe we, let's segue to. I know you, we got to talk about NBA just for a second because our man Zion's on Jordan now. I know. Now, none of, no one's really surprised at that. The headline didn't surprise me. What did surprise me was the amount of money other companies were throwing at him mm-hmm. that he denied just to say he was a Jordan uh, player. Yeah, man. Even even my guys, Lee Ning tried to offer him 19 a year. Really? Yeah, he said no. Let's, let's look at some of these numbers here. Uh, Adidas uh, stopped negotiating with him after uh, he wanted more than 10 milli a year. Um Leaning in Anta. Anta is another uh, Chinese. Anta is who uh, Clay Thompson is, I believe, with. Okay. And I think Kevin Garnett had ties with them after he left Adidas. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, Leaning offered 19, Anta 15, respectively. Uh, and uh, fuck, where, it, it, it just blows my mind that he did. So he did a seven year deal for 75 million with Jumpman. Puma was talking to him. Um, yeah, man, that's just so much fucking money to just go, no, nah, I want to be a jump. Well, okay, here's the thing, and I'll say this. Uh, Zion's got the the most lucrative uh, rookie sneaker deal since LeBron James. Absolutely, because they're Uh, they're trying to set him up to be the next LeBron. All right, now, um, a lot of people were saying, you know, his move to Jordan brand was kind of dumb in a sense, and when I say dumb, because everyone's like, you got to go with Nike. But... I understand where he's going with with Jordan Brand. Um, I also understand why he didn't want to go with, you know, Lee Nang or Anta or even. Yeah, I uh, mean, as much as I, you know, we joke about Lee Nang and stuff, I totally not. I totally understand not going with a, like a, a Chinese based brand just because of like locationally and like the amount of respect in yeah, American market. Um, I so I, I will say that. <clears throat> um, you also have to realize Nike has a lot of signature athletes under their belt right now. Of bro. course, yeah. You know, you when you start breaking it down, it's you know LeBron. Kobe, Kevin Durant, Kyrie, Giannis, Antetokounmpo. You have, you know what I mean? Like, there's, you know, there's five guys right there who Nike still creates models for. Whereas Jordan brand, uh, their main guys are, you know, Russell Westbrook, Kemba, Walker, Carmelo, Anthony, you know, those, you know. And so I think... I think Zion sees something there. Now, will Jordan be able to – because remember, here's the thing too, though. When you go to Jordan brand, you're not going to – you're never going to be bigger than the the biggest guy. If yeah, that makes exactly. Sense. Yeah. You know, and I'm not saying that you go to Nike and you become the biggest guy, and you, but, you know, you're still under umbrella. But right. if you're Zion, you're always going to be in the Michael Jordan shadow, if that makes sense. Of course. Now, seven years, $75 million is mm. nothing to sneeze at. Because no. Rookies don't get that type of shoe deal. LeBron got, I think, uh, 90 mil uh, from Nike as a rookie. Yeah, total. But, um, you know, I don't know, man. I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if he gets – if if he's getting player edition exclusives only or is, are they going to sit there and say, we want to create the Air Zion 1. Dude, no, he's definitely getting a Zion 1. He's definitely getting a Jordan shoe. He's, he's getting his own Jordan shoe, but in the history of Jordan shoes, yeah. how many Jordan shoes have you said, oh, these shit's fire, bro? None. Ru- Literally the, none. The why nots? Mm, I mean, the why nots are – they're all right. Yeah, all of them are – all right. I, you know, um, back in the days, I remember Eddie Jones and those guys. They had their own uh, Team Jordan. Vin Baker, uh, they had Team Jordans, and fucking, uh, you know, Carmelo's had his, you know, his uh, sneakers. Yeah, I mean, Jordan notoriously, other than actual Jordan shoes, has just not been good. Yeah, I mean, when you and we've discussed this, when you start, yeah. when you start getting outside of the original, you know, twelve, thirteen Jordans. Yeah. There, I mean, and and from a lifestyle perspective, from a from a on the court standpoint, there are some solid shoes. Absolutely, if you play ball, like yeah, yeah, but like to wear them as like a like you know, and I think a lot, of, you know, I think nowadays, you know, you're not gonna see so many guys have sneakers that are straight up lifestyle, that are like you know basketball and lifestyle sneakers. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, we didn't really we've touched it. For a second, pause. But we haven't discussed how like uh, they Nike even themselves s- s- kind of took that away from yeah, us because they started making the lifestyle versions of the basketball shoes. There you go. So I mean, one day we'll we'll get into that. We'll break that down. I think but, uh, yeah, that's good. It's good to break down. Yeah, but I mean, I, yeah, I don't know. I I hope they don't fuck them up. 
not only they, I don't think they will. I just want to see what they're gonna do yeah. with him. You know, what they're gonna do in terms of you know being able to market this kid properly in terms of giving him his signature line and and once again, I mean you you know. I mean, maybe his thinking, you know, once again, I mean, Jordan, you know, he has Nikes and, you know, and, and maybe he just doesn't want to be like the sixth or seventh guy on, on, on under Nike. Like I said, you're not beating LeBron. You're not, you know, Giannis, you know, he just got his first signature. Paul George has a signature. So, you know. Yeah, like, I mean, like, so, I mean, all right, so here, let's break this down. What do you think of the top active, and when I say active, like people purchasing now still to either play or just walk around in basketball shoes that Nike makes right now? All right. If you, Kyrie Five is up there. This well, is no particular order. That's what I was gonna say. If you're talking about in terms of signature models, uh, Kobe's people love playing basketball in Kobe's. That's true. Uh, Kyrie's people love playing basketball. The, the in Kyrie's. five specific, or no, the four. The four is the the so bread. Nah. I mean, three, four. I mean, Kyrie four, three, four, five, whatever. Okay. Uh, people play ball in Kyrie's. Yeah. Uh, Paul George sneaker is another mm-hmm. sneaker that people like playing in. People, some, a lot of people, some people play in LeBron's. Some people don't like how heavy they are. Yeah, the Gundam-looking ones are the ones I think people play the most in, right? Like uh, when he got those hard plastic corner ones. You know which one I'm talking about? I don't know what you mean by Gundam. They just like look mad technical. They look like robots on your feet. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I think I know. Those, those are like six, five, six, four or five years old. Yeah. They're not like new, but no. yeah, I mean, you know, so you got those type of guys. You got... Um, you know, then Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to come out with his. Uh, he has his uh, first signature shoe. I like that shoe, by the way. I, I do, too. Yeah. So when you start really breaking it down, like Zion, and, you know, and I'm not saying that Zion is going to get, you know, he wouldn't get a signature. But, I mean, dude, he's definitely down the list. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, so, I mean, we'll see. I mean, once again, NBA season is not, you know, it's, it's not here yet. And we got some time. But I'm definitely looking forward to see what Jordan does with Zion. I am, too. I legitimately am too. Um, yeah, he. I am mad. People text me when they find out like he signed to Jordan. They're like, "Dude, he fucked up." Nah, I don't think he fucked up. I think just they have to carefully uh, handle this kid's career. I mean, not carefully, but I mean because once again, I mean he has to do things on the basketball court. But what I'm saying is, from a a marketing standpoint, yeah, uh, you know, uh, this kid being the face of Jordan brand because he is going to be the face. He's yeah. the face of this of Jordan brand. Yeah. Um, what will they do? Give him, you know, he has to, they'll, they'll figure that. Hopefully they figure that. I don't know if they will. Cause I, I, like I said, I've seen what they've done with other players and I don't know if that's what they can do. Hopefully. Yeah. They, uh, hopefully he, they treat him right. Yep. You know, it's just, it's just funny. Cause you brought up mellow earlier too. It's just like talk about treating people, right? Like I, I feel so bad for him right now cause he just says no, no one wants him can't retire i know because it because if he retires it's like they forced him out mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and they don't treat legacy acts in the nba very well no, no. i mean i mean like Shaq, i think is a great example of someone who got treated very poorly at the end of his career because he, what he wore like four different jerseys in four different years right yeah he went from uh he was on cleveland well he's, uh, a, he's on phoenix in 2009 then yeah. cleveland in 2010 and then uh, did he just go to the Celtics? And then I think he went to the Celtics after. And that. then he was that. It was just yeah. It was and three. He, it was it three was and out. Yeah, I think he was done after. He was that. getting veteran minimum. You know what I mean? He was he was old though. He was kind of he wasn't yeah, you know. I mean, he was Shaq was you know. But this is different from Melo. Melo like you 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 know what I would say you would compare Carmelo Anthony to Allen Iverson, and when I say the ending of yes. their careers, I will yeah I'll I'll yeah I can do that. You would compare those two guys, and you would say, "God damn, they both can score at thirty yeah, easily." Easy, and um, and now the way that their careers are ending, it's uh, and when I say ending, Allen Iverson's career was pretty much, "Hey, you don't want to come off the bench, or, okay? You don't, we're, you know, we're not going to really deal with you." So, um, I think that's those two are very similar. I don't think Shaq. I think Shaq was one of those guys who just kind of, you know, he he. he I don't want to say he overstayed his welcome, but. I do kind of feel like he would force. He's forced out. Because well, by no, the time he, when he was on Celtics, it's like, how do you wear three different jerseys in three different years? Well, I think he just became a journeyman at the end, you know, and um, he became a journeyman, and and and, and I think you know he went. To, he ended his career with Boston. I think he 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 uh, he hurt himself. I forgot what it was. If it was an Achilles or whatever. It I think was. he just did a layup once. <laughs> 
<laughs> but he's forever a Celtic now. That's what I'm saying. He's forever man. a Celtic in my mind. Yeah, that's what I mean. So I mean that that I don't think I, I don't think you can sit here and say that. My Celtics dream team is Larry Bird, Shaq, Rasheed Wallace, mm-hmm. uh, Paul Pierce, and Kevin Garnett. <laughs> Those are my starting five. <laughs> and then the bench is Ray Allen, uh, fucking. T- oh, Jason Terry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Rondo. <laughs> and then, how we felt my team. Uh, Dominique Wilkins. I was on play for the Celtics too. Yeah, right? he was on it for a year. He rocked 12 for a minute. Yeah. And then, uh, fuck. So, Paul, Antoine Walker. Oh, Gino yeah. Roger. Well, I, Joe, I got to have Antoine Walker in there. He helped get the ring. And so, no no, no 80s guys, no Paris, no Mikhail, no Bird. I'm unfamiliar. Well, no, I said Bird. He was my first uh, one. But uh, I'm I'm unfamiliar with, uh, you know, Bill Russell. If Russell, I can get Bill Russell in the I mean, prime. Kuzi. Kuzi, yep. Havlicek. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's my. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Imagine Jason Terry on the bench with Dominique Wilkins. Jesus Christ. <laughs> All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> too far? I took too, the bit too far? Too, too far. Uh, too much of the bit. Um. All right, but, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, I think this is, I think we're at a good spot. Yeah, I think we're at a great spot. I think, I think yeah. we're perfect. Um, I do want to shout out Drake real quick for putting out old music and then somehow beating most new artists like out al- like albums that they of new music. That's what he does. That's what the fuck Drake does, baby. Um I don't, I don't remember what year Draft Day came out, but it, Draft Day was on that yeah, little, little package and uh I saw a lot of people on the internet claiming that this was the first instance of the Drake curse because it was about Manziel and that other guy. That's 2014, I think. Yeah, so Draft Day is uh Johnny Manziel yeah, I think that's uh, definitely a uh, 2014 song. I think Andrew Wiggins. Oh, yeah, that was the other guy. Andrew, yeah, he mentioned both of those yeah, guys. In the al- yeah, Manziel and Wiggins, both of those guys are fucking. Flopped. Well, yeah, Wiggins is a flop, and Johnny Manziel is out of the NFL. Yeah, dude, flopping all over. He, I think he's going to go to the XFL or whatever that fucking yeah, extreme so one is. Too. But, um, right. yeah, shout out to Drake for just putting out old music and stomping all over everybody, being the, there you go. the musical uh, pioneer you are. I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think so. Right, we can, anything else we got, we can come back to next week. Man. Yeah. Um, so, Chris, where can I find you at, man? At Not That Cheney on all social media. Uh, you can go to notthatcheney.com to see my artwork. You can also go to threeflameemojis.com to see my artwork. Uh, you can go to girlsdon'tspeaktome.com to see my artwork. You can go. <laughs> I'm Lawrence Los. You can find me at LZD325. Chris is going to make the listeners want to punch both of us in the mouth, and I'm not trying to get punched in the mouth by anyone. No, we're done. So we're done. Uh, we are we are good to go. Uh, make sure you uh, rate. Give us five stars on uh, on uh, iTunes. Uh, please so tell your friends. Tell a friend to tell a friend and tell a friend to listen to the podcast. Yeah, screenshot this. Uh, fucking post it on Instagram. Um we had a great new review that someone did. It was very nice. We'll mm-hmm. read it next time. I think I posted it on the story or whatever. But, yeah, guys, this is it. Sup Podcast, episode 73. Uh, spoofing our asses off over here. Spoofing, baby. <laughs> we out. Peace. We out. Peace.